Hey there, welcome to No BS Tutorials. I'm Dre Cubed, and I know why you're here, so let's skip the BS. Let's make a few things clear so we can make sure you're not wasting your time. This video will detail how to set up a PC Terraria server hosted off of your computer that your friends will be able to join via your IP address. There's nothing sketchy to this, I'm not going to make you download anything, because this is a feature that is built right into Terraria. The only thing you're really going to have to do is set up port forwarding for your server, which may sound scary, but it's actually really easy to do. So, the only things you're going to need to completely tutorial are an installation of Terraria on your computer, your public IP address, your IPv4 address, and the login information to your router. If you are unaware how to obtain any of these materials, I will cover how you get this information as you move through the tutorial. If you're on PC or the YouTube app, you can see that the timeline is segmented into key sections in case you are only looking for a certain step in this process. Timestamps of these sections are also available in the video's description. Alright, so the first thing you're going to want to do is open up File Explorer and navigate to where you have Terraria installed. If you don't know where that is, alternatively, you can open up Steam, right-click your installation of Terraria, click Properties, swap to the Local Files tab, and then press this Browse button right here. This will open up File Explorer, and will actually be right where we want to be. In this folder, you'll see a lot of stuff, but what we're looking for is terrariaserver.exe, which is right here. Now, if you were to launch this server right now, it would go online, but it wouldn't do what you want. That's because as of right Right now, this server is only local to your PC, but obviously you want your friends to be able to join it. In order to allow other players to connect to your server, you are going to need to enable port forwarding through your router. And this is where things get fancy. We need to get to your router's login screen, and for this, you need your router's default gateway. In order to locate it, type cmd into the Windows search bar and open up the command prompt. In the command prompt, you are going to want to type the command ipconfig. At the bottom of the listed information, you will see your default gateway listed. While you're here, also take note of your IPv4 address, as we will be needing that later. At this point, you're going to need to open an internet browsing window and type your router's default gateway into the address bar. By inputting your default gateway, you will be brought to your router's login screen. Now, obviously, my screen may look a little different from yours if you have a different brand of router, but we're still doing the same thing. You're going to need to log in through this page. If you don't know the username and password for your router, most people don't change them on setup, so you can search the default username and password of your model of router and try that. Um, if that doesn't work, you're probably going to either have to go to your parents or service provider in order to gain this information. Now, again, this portion is going to look quite different based on what router you have, but what you're looking for is a page or section dealing with port forwarding. For me, I have to go to the firewall tab and then click on virtual servers slash port forwarding on the sidebar. I'm going to click add and regardless of what you're on it should be asking for the same information here. In the description prompt you're just going to put whatever you want this to be named in here. For inbound port you want to put 7777 to 7777. You want the format to be TCP, and you want the local port to be 7777 to 7777 as well. The private IP address is that IPv4 address we saw earlier, so go ahead and input that number into the field. You can then add the virtual server, and just like that, you've set up port forwarding. Now we're almost done with the setup here. There are only two things left to do. Right now, if you booted up the server and tried to get your friends to join, they still most likely wouldn't be let in, and that's because they would be getting blocked. Your computer will likely recognize the incoming connection requests from your friends as security threats and sever the connection. In my experience, Windows Defender does do this, but I don't know how this will interact with other antivirus software. If Windows Defender does end up blocking this connection, you can simply disable it for the duration that the server is running by typing Control Panel into the Windows search bar. From here, click system and security, click Windows Defender Firewall, and on the sidebar, click Turn Windows Defender Firewall on or off, and toggle it off. Obviously, if your system security is of importance to you, toggle Windows Defender back on once you close the server. Alrighty, final step. You're probably thinking, this is all great, but how do I get my friends onto the server? All you need to do is provide your friends with your public IP address. If you don't know what that is, type what is my IP address into Google, and <laughs> there it is. Now, big disclaimer. You probably already know this, but your IP address is not something you want to be throwing out to anyone. If someone untrustworthy gets a hold of your IP address, that could potentially pose major security and safety risks. If you need convincing, search up an IP location finder and put your public IP address in it. Just please be careful who you give your IP to. Now you can head back into File Explorer, launch terrariaserver.exe, choose one of your worlds, set a player limit, leave the server port as 7777, type Y to activate that port forwarding you just set up, Set a server password if you want one, and just like that, you have made a fully functioning Terraria server that you and your friends can play on. Just go into Terraria Multiplayer and select Join via IP, input your public IP address, and you're good to go. The server will remain open so long as the server window remains open. 
the server will periodically autosave, but in order to ensure you don't lose any data, instead of hitting X on the window when you're done with your session, type exit into the server's command line to save and quit. There are also a few other fun commands built in that you can use. Just type help into the server command line to get a list. Alright, that's all I got for you today. I hope I helped you out by making this video, and I hope you have fun on your server. If for whatever reason you are running into some issues in this process, always feel free to drop a comment explaining what's going on. I'll do my best to help you work through it. If you found this video helpful, drop us a like so other users like yourself can find this video easier. Thanks for choosing NBST. I've been Dre Cubed, and I'll see you around.